Amy Cantrell, and I am a, an ordained minister in the Presbyterian Church USA, a long-term uh, supporter of the Fellowship of Re Reconciliation. And I'm honored to be in deep community uh, through Be Loved Asheville. So we are a grassroots uh, community building organization, and we, we come together from every different intersection that you can imagine um, to tackle some of the toughest challenges of our time, systemic racism, homelessness, poverty, and now COVID-19. And we do that in some very innovative ways by really uh, equipping and resourcing uh, natural trusted community leaders right on the ground um, and working together to uh, create uh, deep mutuality. So we say our mission is to cultivate a transformative way of life rooted in community creativity and equity. And we try to live that out every day by putting love into action in very embodied ways. tell you what it's like on, on the ground right now in, in Asheville, North Carolina. So we're in the western part of North Carolina um, and, and we're, we've really seen a, a tremendous impact. Um, as somebody that's worked on the ground here for decades, I've never seen it this dire um, and we've seen some really awful things. You know, we, we had a, an African-American man and Jerry Williams, who had been shot and killed by the police here. We've had um, weeks-long ice raids and uh, all sorts of things that, that we've seen in, in our time and experience and, and this pandemic. Um, I say it, it's all of the crises that we've ever dealt with all at the same time, impacting all the different communities that, that we love and walk with. And, and so that is, is a really tremendous thing. So even essential workers uh, that are predominantly people of color have seen their lives uh, put at risk. Uh, we've gone out to, to find essential workers having uh, no PPE, they don't have masks or sanitizers or gloves and um, they welcome us because they're, they're literally putting their lives at risk to keep the nation surviving, um, but have constantly been minimized um, down to, to what they're paid, down to not getting hazard pay or not having sick pay um, or sick leave for a long time. We have seen the, the impacts, the disproportionate impacts for people of color here in our state in particular. You know, we have uh, Latino people making up about 10% of the population, now 29% of COVID cases um, in North Carolina, our African-American population at 22%, but making up 38% of COVID cases in North Carolina and 30, 37% of COVID deaths in North Carolina. Um, here in Buncombe County, um, our Latinx community has been very hard hit with five times more COVID cases than any other group. Um, and what we're seeing is, of course, these are the people uh, on the ground who have been deemed essential, though before they were not uh, seen as essential or valued. And, and because they're uh, essential workers and they are really in the crosshairs, um, are, are exposed to a great level of risk. Um, we're also a community that's dependent on what's wrong. Um, to, to talk about the Ted Myers who talked about um, recognizing that, that we need to, to look at a 12-step model in terms of uh, white supremacy and capitalism. And, and one of the things in, in a very valuable article that he said was we're dependent on everything that's wrong. Um, and so when, and we don't, we're not willing to admit that because we, we love that lifestyle. And so we know that people not only are at risk, uh, extreme risk for COVID-19, but, but are at risk in all the ways that they've been at risk um, for the, the whole history of this nation. And so these are some of the things that, that we understand as we look out. Um, is that the mirror mirror is on the wall and the mirror is asking us to re-examine everything that we know. The mirror is exposing the underbelly of this nation and laying bare what so many people uh, in communities that are at risk of systemic racism and see this every day. Um, 
systemic poverty every day. These are the people that know what what COVID has revealed to to other people, and what is so extreme now in COVID nineteen um, is that we are a country that was cast. Our DNA is cast in white supremacy and capitalism, and so this is an hour where we get to decide as we see this revelation. Um, as a pastor, we we. We could say COVID-19 is apocalyptic and in many ways that people might think of as apocalyptic, but, but I know the word apocalypse means unveiling or revealing. And so this, this is very revealing um, of what has happened and what has always been happening in our nation, um, but it's been laid bare. Mm. So, so, if we look into the future, what do we see? What do we see? And I think it's it's up to us. This is what we are saying. The future is up to us. Um, this moment has wrestled us to the ground. And now we get to decide. We get to decide who we will be um, coming out of COVID-19. Um, we are talking in our community about creating a nation that has never been a nation where all of us thrive, a nation where people can celebrate who they are and the deep roots of their culture and their history and their people. And we can come alongside each other and create a place um, where everybody is centered, where equity really is what's happening in practice um, in a way where we lift from the ground so that everybody is seen, heard, uh, fulfilled, that everybody can thrive, that everyone is seen as essential and valued as such. Um, this is our dream. And, and we say here in our community, we've never been closer. We've never been closer to the kind of revolution that we've all hoped and dreamed for. And so we, in this moment, um, though things are dire, though our communities are, are under attack by both COVID and um, those at the very top, um, who are steeped in corruption, who um, cannot stand our communities, um, wish that we would ban be banished and uh, disappear from the face of the earth. Um, we, we recognize that that, that is, being, uh, is, is an absolute reality, but we also know that, that there's something truer than that. Um, and that is the power of love and the power of community, the power of our ancestors, the power of our people coming together um, across intersections to create the beloved community. Um, we know that this has happened in the past, that there have been hours um, like this in the past where there was a surge from the ground of people rising, rising up, rising together, lifting each other um, to, to create a new world in the shell of the old, as Dorothy Day would say. And so this is what we're working toward. Um, so we say, we don't, we don't know uh, what COVID is going to do, but we know what we're gonna do. Um, and so right now we are casting the future that we want. Um, we've never seen a spring like this. Everybody's commenting about um, how Mother Earth is just breathing again and, and able to, to really just flourish. And we know that we can flourish together when we live in balance. And so uh, we want to do that. Our indigenous uh, people have taught us that. And, and we know that whiteness has created a, a deep imbalance across the planet that we are um, working right now um, to, to begin to reset. And so that, that's the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, nobody has a crystal ball, but we know what we can do right now, and we can create what it is that we dream of right now. Um, and for me, it goes back to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 tells us, it, it creates this really powerful if-then, um, and I'm no mathematician, but but there, there is a, a part of geometry I remember where you had if-then propositions, and Isaiah 58 says, if, right? If you'll remove the chains from prisoners who are chained in unjustly, if you will remove the yoke of oppression, if you'll share your food with the hungry, if you'll open your homes to those 
who are struggling and who are homeless, if you don't turn away from your own flesh, basar, that's the Hebrew word for flesh and blood, or our kin, as we say here, um, our relatives, it says, then your light will shine like the dawning of the sun, and you will rise quickly. You will be healed. Your honesty will protect you, and the glory of the Lord will defend you. If you don't mistreat others, if you are not cruel, if you treat your workers well and pay them living wages, then your light will shine like the dark shine in the dark. Your darkest hour will, will be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you and provide the things you need to eat, even in the desert. The Lord will make you healthy. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water or like a stream that never runs dry. You will rebuild the houses left in ruins. You will be known as the repairer of the city and its streets. 